<laughs> good well, insulation. Yeah. Yeah. How much metal is in there? It's uh, yeah. probably radioactive. It is stainless steel. So Stand by, please. Okay. We're with two of the people who put together the third in the series of the Looks into the Future under the title Mad Max. I guess second one wasn't titled that, but it was still about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mel Gibson, who plays that title role, and George Miller, who in this case is one of two directors on the same picture, Beyond Thunderdome. It's not the first time that's been done, but it does introduce problems if they aren't the right two people, does it not? Yeah, I certainly can do. But we'd, uh, George Agley and I had worked together before, uh, on television series, uh, and I guess these films need a lot of collaboration, not only between directors, but between everybody, actors and designers and everybody, and uh, two directors just add to the collaboration, so, and there weren't any problems, it was, uh, um, it was a lot easier actually. Yeah, it made yeah. a stronger unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that is very helpful when it happens. Did you know, I guess the first time you signed this gentleman to play that lead role, I mean, he hadn't. He didn't have a, a big name, so he obviously would like to do a major feature motion picture. Was there some question about whether you'd be able to get him for this third in the series? <laughs> well, there's, there's a question because Mel is uh, is an actor who is a true actor. He's not that interested in just building a career, and so the only thing that will get him is the role. And if uh, and I think with us as filmmakers, the only thing that would motivate us doing a film is if you feel you've got a good story. Mm -hmm. So you, it's the story that comes first. If the story comes first, then everything else follows. So it's just a question of talking the story over with Mel. And uh, even though he was very tired having done three pictures back to back <laughs> in snow and stuff, it, we went in for another one. It's rare that I'll, I'll actually, I mean, there's just a lot of trust in there because I, I know that these guys work like that. And if, if they're excited about something, they're like, what is it? I get all curious and come sniffing around. Just... It's a different man than you've portrayed before. This man is growing, is, he's opening himself, making himself more vulnerable, which is a, a word that you would never have identified with Mad Max before. No, it's a, a gradual thing, and I think uh, he's, well, he's older, and I think he's mellowing out. Um, he's come full circle. He's, he was a closet human being, and he's jumped out of the closet, you know, mm -hmm. so he's not as much of an enigma. Not willingly. He is almost no, dragged a by very young people, too, which Absolutely. is an interesting part of this. It is. I think uh, with uh, that character and that world, that bleak world of pure survival, um, that you can only be um, hit with a bolt with innocence. I mean, that's the only thing that can kind of penetrate that hard skin. There's nothing you can fight against with innocence. Mm -hmm. It's totally disarming. Your, what has happened to you since that first picture, between pictures one and three, mm. must have been, no matter how much you plan it, no matter how much you work on a career, it must be startling and almost befuddling to have the kind of success you've had. Well, heck, it's, uh, it's, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> no. whinging about it. Um, I enjoy doing it immensely, and I think that's the, the major thing you have to, to do is enjoy yourself. I have done things where I haven't enjoyed myself. Um, I'll try and avoid that. <laughs> the, the Australian film industry certainly, it's almost paralleled <laughs> Mel's career, not, not all of it because of his career, obviously, but it's become uh, very much respected on the world scene, and there's, uh, there's some wonderful pictures have come out of Australia in the last, what, 10 years or so, right? What, what's the result? Is, is, that, is that the result of... Uh, a few people who have been the spark plugs, or what has caused it? I think it kind of starts off with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a few people. I think it was precipitated by a time when Australia felt like it was growing up. Mm -hmm. It was just after the Vietnamese War. Mm -hmm. It's a young country, no identity. Few people who really into film. And luckily, a government that decided to put a little bit, because it's such a small country, you need subsidy that started some subsidy, we just gave people material to work with. And I think, if anything, that, that made the Australian film industry was basically enthusiasm, sort of a real enthusiasm that, that uh, you have when you, you have a chance to do something. And they've only been a nation since the beginning of the century, and I think they wanted to die, or they did identify themselves through their art forms, and that they liked to have a good look at themselves. Now, the, most of us think of you as an Australian. You are a, kind of a rare hybrid. I mean, you're, Yank, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your um, early growing up years were spent here in the United States. New York, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice place. 
Um, <laughs> there is something rather odd about being a hybrid. It's like being a naval orange, I suppose. <laughs> um, it makes you more of an observer, I think, of mm -hmm. culture. I suppose people who travel a lot will get the same sort of thing happening. Mm -hmm. But it's like a, a big dose of it. It's like one big lot of that and another big helping of that. And you compare them, and it just makes you more of an observer. And of course, uh, training as an actor yeah. doesn't hurt that Absolutely. observation, or shouldn't it? Observation is the basis of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You spend a lot of time on stage, too, mm -hmm. and purposely. Yeah, I enjoy it. Um, you have to sort of gauge a live audience. You have to sort of know an audience. It, it hones your self-awareness, and it um, makes you better able to do your job. Mm -hmm. It's an educational process. It's a different kind of acting, however, than... It is. Yeah, it's completely continuous. It's continuity. There's no chopping or doing the first part last and the last part first. It's two hours and you're into it. Bzzzt. So it's, uh, it's quite something. It's a challenge to do it every night, but uh, very enjoyable. The latest effort of Mel Gibson, as guided through this particular effort by George Miller and others, is called Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Thank you very much Thank for you. spending these moments with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, can I just get some of these stand up for a second? That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Point of view, right? Good little rap. Okay. <gasps> can, I, okay, can I look either side? you got to stretch it. Have you ever done this before, Mel? What, this junket? Kind of in, in Cannes one year, I did it. And, uh, it's a strange phenomenon. <sighs> you get dizzy. I'm dizzy. I'm starting <laughs> to get dizzy. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference. There's no sound here.